This is Big Track, a computer-controlled and programmable electronic vehicle from 1979. It was originally released in the United States by Milton Bradley, or MB. As you can see in this 1979 edition of the Sears catalogue, the Big Track in the US was released in a grey or silver colour. However, the units that were produced for the UK market were white. The American model would have retailed for $31.97 from Sears, and that didn't include the transport trailer that you can see priced separately for $10.97. In this page from the 1980 edition of the Argos catalogue from here in the UK, you can see we have the white model. What's interesting though is you can see that it has the uppercase Big Track logo, which featured on US editions, and the black Milton Bradley sticker, which was replaced by a white version on the UK units. As we can see here, it suggests a suggested retail price of £41 and an actual price of £26.99. This catalogue doesn't feature the trailer. However, in this still from the UK advert, we can see the suggested retail price was actually £39.95, with the transport trailer sold separately for £17.50. Accounting for inflation, that would be somewhere between £100 and £150 in today's money for the big track, so this was an expensive toy. And that doesn't include the additional batteries you would require to operate the device. The main big track itself takes four D-cell batteries, as well as a 9-volt PP3 battery. The trailer itself requires an additional D-cell battery, bringing the grand total to six. And these early electronics do get through them rather quickly. As you can see, I do have the original packaging for my units. On the lower left, you see the big track box, and on the lower right, the big track transport box. You will have noticed that there are indeed three boxes, and that's because I have an additional big track. <laughs> this unit is on loan from a colleague of mine, and is a modern licensed reproduction of the original toy. It was created by a company called Xeon Technologies here in the UK, and released in 2010, so itself is already 15 years old. Here we can see this recreation version in the 2010 Argos Christmas Gift Guide. As you can see, it would have had a regular catalogue price of $34.99, but had been discounted to $29.99 for the holiday season. The reproduction cuts down the required batteries to just 3D cells, a significant saving. While new accessories such as a rocket launcher were made available for the reproduction, unfortunately they're not interchangeable between the two generations. This is due to a change in how the big track communicates with the accessories. In the original, an electrical connection is used, however this was changed to an optical connection in the reproduction devices. There are numerous other subtle differences between the two editions, so let's take a closer look and find out how they both work. So here we have both of the big track units. On the left I have the original MB version from the 1970s and 80s, and on the right hand side we have the modern reproduction from Xeon Technologies. I have the literature for both of these units here to hand, and in content they are practically identical. One major difference is around the laser cannon on the original unit, where it's powered by an incandescent bulb. So there are indeed bulb replacement instructions in the original user guide. In the new user manual for the new unit, there are updates to account for the change in batteries. So now we only require three D-cell batteries, and there are updated illustrations to show the fitting instructions, taking particular regard to the fact that there are now screw fixings for safety. One commonality between the manuals is interesting in the fact that the out button has the precisely the same description in both. Here in the modern manual, you can see it clearly referring to the Big Track Transport, which as far as I'm aware, was never actually released for the new model. Speaking of the Big Track Transport, I also have the original literature from that device as well. And as you can see here, this is a very slimline operator's manual. In fact, the instructions focus almost entirely on the out and test buttons. However, on the back, you can see there is an independent test instruction using a paperclip to activate the device. So I think we'll give that a go right now. So I have my paperclip, and what I need to do is lift up this shroud here and short these two terminals on this three and a half millimeter plug. All I need to do is short the terminals for a brief period, and that will activate the mechanism. Once it has activated, it will complete a full cycle on its own. The mechanism is constructed in such a way that once the action has begun, the movement itself closes a switch to ensure that a full cycle is completed. 
This means that once the big track has instigated the action, it doesn't need to monitor the process and the transport can act entirely independently. This is all controlled by this gearbox here and powered by the one D-cell battery hidden under this flap here. The action is initiated by a signal coming along the black and blue wire that traces all the way along up through the yoke and connects to this plug here. Now let's compare our two big tracks. On the left we have the original unit with the MB Electronics logo. You'll notice that's missing from the new version and in some units you will see a Xeontech logo instead. On the top of the unit you'll see this round grey turret cover. And on the original it is in fact removable. Inside we find the 9 volt battery that powers the processor or brains of the big track. On the new unit, the processor is powered by the same three D-cell batteries, and so the cover is entirely decorative and non-removable. On the front of the unit, we notice a minor difference in the design of the laser cannon. On the original unit, we use an incandescent lamp, and there is in fact a hole at the front here, underneath the blue cover. The new unit uses an LED, and this area is filled in. The design and function of the keypad on both devices is the same. However, there has been an update to the power switch. On some reproduction devices, we have a three position switch, allowing us to adjust the traction of the motors. This functionality is described in the manual. The center position is off, the forward position is for carpets, and the backwards position is for smooth or wooden floors. Additionally, the accessory port under this small gray cover is different on the two devices. On the original, we have the three and a half millimeter jack to support the big track transport. In the new device, this has been replaced with an optical output in the form of an LED. Finally, on the rear of the original device, you may be able to make out the edge of the battery cover. This is missing from the new device because of the updated battery compartment now with screw fixings. And finally, on the underside of the device, we can see the differences between the two gearboxes, as well as the two different battery compartments. Finally, from this angle, you may be able to identify the slightly longer wheelbase on the reproduction model, as well as some other geometric differences between the two devices. As you can see, at the center of the device, there is a Texas Instruments chip, and this is actually a TMS-1000 processor. As you can see, this one is socketed and it wouldn't have been so originally. I've already had this device apart. I've discussed the TMS-1000 family of microcomputers many times on this channel, as it was a popular CPU or microprocessor for use in digital toys and electronics. Keypad input is handled via this simple membrane that allows the processor to scan the rows and columns of the keys. As you may have noticed, I had a little trouble extracting a lost screw from the mechanism, and that's because the gearbox here uses a magnetic clutch to ensure the wheels stay synchronized except when turning. So again, another close-up look at the PCB, and as you can see, it's generally a very simple device. All of the smarts are embedded in the firmware of that microcontroller, with very limited support circuitry, predominantly for driving the motors surrounding it. I'll link to a full detailed breakdown of how this circuit actually works. So let me reassemble my original big track and we'll take a closer look at that modern reproduction. So let's run the test program and see if I've broken anything. So that all looks good, but let's also check the transport interface. Beep. 
and this successfully ended up on the floor. So here we have the modern reproduction unit. And while I do have permission from my colleague to disassemble it and show it to you, if it gets tricky at any point, I will immediately stop and reassemble it to avoid any damage. But let's have a look and see if I can show you the circuitry inside. So here's the revised circuit board for the new version. As you saw, I did have a little bit of trouble there because of this rear piece of plastic here, which I'll show you uh, when I reinstall it. But this was clipped in over two screws, which made it very difficult to remove them. I had to unclip this first before I could remove those screws. But yes, we can see the new circuit board and the IC here is on a little daughter board, which is soldered directly to the main PCB. There does seem to be a little bit of crust inside the device, but that would likely be from original manufacturing as the batteries are below this level. I'm not going to disassemble this any further. Um, I don't want to cause any damage to the device, but as you can see, we have the speaker at the front and now we have an LED on here. I do wonder if this is a blue or white, um, probably a blue LED, or there is a blue filter, of course, at the front. So now I think it's time for me to reassemble this and make sure everything still works. And here is that plastic rear shield that covers these two screws. So that just slides in like so. So now it's time for our test. So it seems we have successfully reassembled this one as well. So I just want to say thank you again to my colleague for allowing me to borrow their 2010 Big Track and even disassemble it for you in this video. But for now, I think I only have one more thing to say, and that's I hope you found this video about the vintage Big Track and its modern reproduction from 2010 interesting, and I hope to speak to you again soon in the next video.